How you doing? All right, guys, thanks for coming. I'll answer any questions for you. On a beautiful Columbus Day in Ohio. Oh, yep. Can you just kind of take us through the differences of your first week or so when you got that Florida job and, and what, was on that, what was on that roster and what's on this roster? How do you compare and contrast the two? That, that's hard because it's so long ago. And uh, uh, I mean, they're two very similar, I think, uh, teams with some talent. I mean, um, I took over for a guy named Ron Zook, who was a very good recruiter, very good football coach, and uh, was able to keep a couple guys on their staff. So the more I'm, I haven't thought about it, but I'm kind of am now that you asked. Uh, here I took over for a very, from a very good football coach, coaches, and uh, so I think it's fairly similar. I think right on schedule. Uh, I think I can tell one of the challenges I had for Braxton Miller and Kenny Guyton was to throw the ball a little bit, and they have uh, not near where we need to be throwing throwing the ball, but uh, much different than what you saw in spring, much different. And uh, I saw a team that went out and worked. After the first week, who's that, who's that one guy that's really gotten your attention this week? Where you, where you come back stronger than you thought he would, or he's popped up? I think Carlos Hyde. I think Carlos Hyde is a guy that, uh, as uh, I saw, I called it the Wednesday practice. He had a Wednesday practice in spring where it was legit, like a legitimate tailback practice at Ohio State University. Unfortunately, he didn't have a Wednesday, you know, a Monday, Friday, Saturday to follow up the Wednesday practice. Uh, but I think we're what are we eight, nine into it, and he's uh, he's really solid. I mean, he's he's the one guy in offense, on defense, the guy that's caught me. Uh, uh, a guy named Hale, uh, Joe Hale has done a very good, I can't say he's a, you know, all Big Ten player yet, but from where he was in the spring to where he is now, I got to give him credit. He came out and worked. The other guy is uh, Christian Bryant. You know, I know Christian Bryant played here, but I didn't see as much as I'm seeing now that I saw in the spring. So he, uh, he got real busy as well. Yeah, great question. And, and the linebackers, the, the comment was made just because you look at the last decade, you could arguably say that the greatest set of linebackers in, in recent history played here at Ohio State. And that's kind of what I'd expect, and I didn't see that necessarily last year, this year. But Sabino has had a very good fall camp, very good spring, very good spring. Uh, Shazir is also having a very good uh, uh, fall camp. Ryan Grant was dealing with some uh, – family health issues back home that he's back now and and I'm hearing good things about his grandfather uh, as far as health wise but he's got a he's the he's one that's got to keep going so the guy that uh has really taken a notice and he's not a black stripe guy yet but um David Perkins from South Bend he's uh he's kind of he had a heck of a scrimmage yesterday and he's uh he's a fly and hit guy which we want so he's a guy right now that uh he'll play oh he'll play this year how much is he still working on that? Uh, the, the, uh, I apologize. I usually try to list linemen whenever someone asks me that question. But uh, uh, Norwell, Andrew Norwell is, is in the most improved category with Carlos Hyde. Him and uh, Marcus Hall have made the most strides. And that's coming mostly from our line coach, but I see it as well. Uh, the area that's still up in here is right tackle, Reed Fragle and uh, Taylor Decker in a battle, uh, and it's not a battle of all Big Tens yet. You know, it's the guys that are still learning how. To, one guy's learning how to play it. One guy's a freshman. Uh, they're trying hard. They're talented guys. They're great people, but our, our production at right tackle is not where it needs to be right now. You liked your scrimmage yesterday. Did you see anything that came out about anybody that really stood out and how it went? Just some general opinions if you see it. Well, I like our quarterbacks. Our quarterbacks, you know, on, on purpose, uh, they're caged. Tigers right now, I, they're not, uh, they got quick whistles, they got black shirts on them, I think that's what they're wearing, green or black shirts where they're not allowed to be touched. And obviously in our style of play, that uh, that changes the whole game. So the, we open that cage on uh, on September 1st, up until then they won't be touched. And, and we aren't calling a game with the single wing runs and things we like to do. Uh, but our two quarterbacks are, are kind of doing what we ask them to do. Uh, the other name is Nick Vanette. Nick Vanette is one of the most improved players. He, he falls apologize, I wasn't ready for that first question. Well, Nick Vanette is a guy that uh, 
he's going to be right in the middle of this thing. And I didn't see that at all in spring. If you noticed, I didn't even bring his name up because he really was uh, not a very functional guy for us. But I love giving credit where credit's due. When I, that guy got real busy about uh, studying a playbook, learning a game, and Tim Hinton and uh, Nick Vanette have done a nice job. Well, we're scrambling, but we're not running. You know, I want them to, we practice our scramble drill a lot where you keep your eyes downfield. But there's also a part of the game that uh, we all know that game, part of the game that uh, where they change it on a man coverage and he hits it. So, yeah, we're really, really focusing on keeping your eyes downfield, which is a great part of it being a quarterback as well. Do scramblers need to practice scrambling? Or do oh, yeah. It's an A, but scrambling is not, scrambling and running is different than scrambling and keeping your eyes downfield. Uh, he's a, uh, I think all great quarterbacks, the the pure drop back, think about it, you can count them on one hand, the pure, I mean, pure drop back guys that never scramble, really don't do much, you know, that to me, that's a Peyton Manning, he just, you just see him get it out, and then you Tom Brady, and then, and then uh, the other great player at uh, Pittsburgh, Roethlisberger, he, he's a, he makes plays out of not, something out of nothing, and so I think the great quarterbacks I want are the ones that make something out of nothing, and these two can do that, and we practice that a lot. Like, for example, in Pascal, that's seven on seven, just the offensive skill, no D-line or O-line there. And it's about 15, 20 minutes, just work on your throwing the ball, throwing the ball. If the defense covers you, you're not allowed to run. You're not allowed to burn it, uh, throw it away. Normal situations, you throw it away or you run. We want to have them keep, stay live, and that also forces your defense to stay on coverage. So to answer your question, Tim, we, we practice that a lot. He's not. He's earned a consideration. He's had earned a playing time yet. That's still in in process. Uh, I wouldn't mind coming up with a little package where they're both on the field at the same time. And uh, Braxton doesn't know it yet, or either is Kenny. But I have it on a piece of paper. That uh, we'll have that chat probably pretty soon. And I just want to see if it, they keep developing because they're both. If they're our best eleven, both eleven, both guys are our best eleven. Then it's our job to find a way to get them on the field. Much improved. Uh, not Ohio State caliber yet. Um, effort is much better. Uh, Devin Smith is much better than he was in the spring. Uh, the guy that uh, was got dinged up a little bit in the spring is Philly Brown, and he's playing at a much higher level. Jake Stoneburner is now. We officially moved him. He's out with the receivers. And uh, who else is doing good? Verlon Reed still coming. He's a little gimpy from his injury, but he's coming on. Uh, De uh, Evan Spencer had a – well, we're scared there for a minute. He got carted off one day, but it turned out to be just a two knees hit. And I think he's going to be back, if not tomorrow, the next day. So those, we have some depth. Uh, Michael uh, Thomas has picked up where he left in the spring. So, I mean, we got some, we got numbers. We just don't, we, we're still improving as far as quality. And uh, I, I'm obviously much more optimistic about them now than I was three months ago. So Stoneburner now meets with the receivers, wide receivers not the signing. He meets with the receivers. He'll, uh, he'll practice at times because we'll use him as a surface tight end. But we have two very good tight ends at Hireman and uh, Nick Vanette. So he's going to be our Hernandez type guy, the guy that can uh, do some things. How are your running backs other than Carlos coming along, Ron Smith? Good, good, yeah. Uh, really pleased with them right now. Um, the, obviously, number seven not being there has hurt us a little bit, but we asked them to pick it up. Uh, uh, when someone goes down, someone's got to go harder. And so far, uh, Briante, Dunn, and Rod are in a battle for that backup spot. And I couldn't tell you right now who it is because they're both, uh, they had a good scrimmage, uh, yesterday, was it yesterday? I'm not a big fan of the words. Um, I try not to. Uh, I, I don't really believe in that stuff. I believe in team. We have a rule. If you score a touchdown, you better go find a big guy. And, uh, and, and that's a real sincere rule. It will be the last touchdown they score for us. So I'm into the team concept. I do like emotion. I do like passion. We do coach that, encourage it, and celebrate with your teammates. I'm not a big fan of the. This. So if you see the, what you made reference to, I thought it was more of the guys jumping all over each other and showing passion. So absolutely. But I don't like the term, you know, it's not drawing attention to oneself. That first couple of days, you said to the team about the wallet. I don't need all the, I just, I don't, I don't need it. But is that a fine balance? To well, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm up for some rah rah now because the, the comment was that one day, one day, you went out in shorts. Think about this. You've trained all week, all for three months in the weight room. You've been screamed at, yelled at, lifting in weights and stretching and running gassers, and you get to go do something you love. 
in shorts and a t-shirt. So, you know, I want to see him do it now. And it was a really good day yesterday as far as emotion and guys flying around. But they'll go through. This will be the hardest week of training camp. Here, here's an interesting thought that uh, 28, 29 practices for spring for uh, training camp, and then you have 12 times two for the rest of the year. So you have a Tuesday and Wednesday practice for the rest of the season. That's 24 practices. And basically, that's maintenance game planning practices. Your practices 28 to get ready for the first game is all about development. So as a player, you better, I mean, once you start, don't, you're not going to get that much better throughout the fall because you've got two practices a week. Does that make sense? So you've got 24, 24 practices once the season starts till it ends. And then you've got 28 before the first game. So that's where the focus, and, and they're about ready to hit the two a day, two, one, two, one, two coming up. So that's a lot of practices this week. This will be, this will make or break us this week. No, I, I, it, Rich is a good friend of mine. I'm, uh, I'm glad he's back in it. Uh, I, I haven't talked to Rich. He just gets so busy. But we're friends, and I think he's one of the best football minds, offensive football minds, uh, also just a good football coach. So uh, he had an impact, probably not as much as, you know, he had an impact early in my career. Uh, we were both kind of fed off each other a little bit. What part of Jason Turpin uh, you or Oh, boy. I can't really remember. All the above. Uh, it all started because of the hazing. You know, hazing used to be, I remember, I mean, that used to be a problem where they'd shave your head, they'd, I mean, I'd shave eyebrows, they'd make you drink, they'd make you, I mean, obviously that, I don't hear much about that in college sports anymore, so that's a good thing that's been eliminated. However, there is a, I think every program should have some kind of a, a way that you can graduate into becoming a full fledged Ohio State Buckeye. And so we started that back at Bowling Green. And, uh, you know, you kind of start things and some things take off, some things don't. This one exploded. And uh, our coaches love it, our staff loves it, most importantly, the players love it. And it's your rite of passage to become Ohio State Buckeye, and you have to earn it. And having your big brother come up and take your stripe off, that's. You know, once again, the guys, it's interesting that just the human element of everything involved, the guys that are so committed, you know, they tear up, and that's really an emotional thing for them. But like anything else, the guys that are hey, just another day, it doesn't mean a whole lot to them. So we have two so far. We have Devin Bogart and we have Noah Spence. Noah Spence got it done right on the field uh, yesterday after a scrimmage. Good. I think it's no question of strength. You know, 54 is as good a player as there is in college football. Uh, Hankins and, you know, I think you want to make a, a strong, stronger is Nathan Williams if he's able to, and we're counting on him. I mean, um, he, he's working so hard. You just, man, you, every time I think I see him over there, I just, you train your whole life. He's a football guy, loves Ohio State, loves his teammates, and here he is just dealing with an injury. So we're doing all we can. He's a, I love that. He's a, he's a good guy. So we're really pushing him. Once, once he, if he comes back, you're talking about a really strong defensive line. Oh boy, yeah, there's, yeah, they're all good. We take them all. No, his first uh, spring practice was no. His uh, first couple of days of spring practice uh, of training camp, no. Uh, his last two, absolutely yes. He jumped all over the place. Well, I. I think I think he gets bored. I think he's really talented, and we aren't at positions aren't great, but we've gotten a lot better in some positions, and so there is a little bit of a challenge out there. There's no challenge in the spring. He didn't get challenged, and we didn't have time to challenge him because we were either getting sacked or it was, you know, we weren't very very good on offense. So right now you're seeing him challenged, and he answered it. He had a heck the last two days, the day before the scrimmage and the scrimmage, he looked like the way he's supposed to look. Well, I think if you look at 06, uh, 06 team, 08 team, that's as good a defensive lineman. And, you know, I, uh, I would 
you know, I would say this group is, if, you're, if that's the measuring stick, if we get Nathan Williams back, I'd say this is in that category. If he doesn't, then I think we'll still be good, but I just think Nathan's that brings that much sting to you and also experience. That's, that's, that's the, where it all starts. I mean, if you want to have a bad football team, have a bad D-line. If you want to have a, you know, average, you can be average at some other spots and kind of hide them, but it's over if you have a bad defense line. It's, you have no chance. But those freshmen that you brought in, if they lived up to what you want them to do? Yeah, yeah, I think you always wish it happened a little faster. I think Noah Spence is probably ahead of them. You'd probably ask to ask Mike Vrabel, but I'd probably say Noah Spence. And then you got Pitt, Adolphus, and uh, Tommy Shutt are the four that, came in and they're, they're all kind of bunched in there, but they're all show really good signs. I think uh, you're going to see those next three, the stripes coming off pretty soon. Herman, there was a really good piece on you on uh, ESPN earlier this week. Uh, it's also very personal. I'm curious what you thought of that piece. Well, I, uh, I'm not a person that likes to, I'm not comfortable with that stuff, so I hope it kind of goes away. You know, I, I think uh, the guy that did it, his name is Wright Thompson. Um, I wasn't going to do it. I didn't want to do it. Then I started talking to him, and he did his homework, and he was a, I wanted to make sure. If it can help someone else out there, that's the only reason I did it. I don't need that story out there much longer. Uh, every time I, you know, I get to my kids, and they, I want them to have their own life. You know, they don't need to know, be known, but it's deeper than that. And I got, I think, hundreds of emails already from people that have, you know, have dealt with some stuff. So I think if it can help someone do it, if not, then let's move on. Let's, let's talk about Braxton Miller and the spread offense or, but that's why that's why that was done. Would the Evan Camp party change? Are, are, you, are you doing things differently? Or are you no, I think that's the thing that no, not at all. I mean, that's not the the issues aren't aren't how you coach. It's how when you go home at night and when you in the off season and those type of things. And and am I a different person? Yeah, I'm, I'm grown. But training camp day eight and day, training camp day eight at other no. We got, a, we got a good team. We got to get a team on that field ready to go in 20 days, I think it is, or 19 days, and we better be really good. How did you think it was inspired in that piece? What did you think? Kind of evolved in your approach to discipline? Evolved in my approach to. Yeah. Did you think that you had time to approach to discipline for all your stuff? I think so. I think you evolve at. Uh, that's natural, but I, it's, I, I can't say that I've. Let's do this different. Let's do this different. No. Yeah. Once again, I'd, I'd rather talk about some more pressing issues here. Uh, I'm good. The, the family's great. My health is good, and uh, and yeah, that's. I think that's an age-old problem that a lot of people deal with, and I'm sure it'll come up again. But I think there's mechanisms in place to deal with it. Yeah, it, should, uh, it hasn't changed for me because this is all I know. But uh, our players and, and Luke Fickle and those guys have made a comment to me that, you know, it was kind of a big-time advantage. You had your players 24-7. And we had uh, finals. We had 17 guys in a biology class. We had, uh, you know, uh, we had some real stuff to take care of, and now it's all over. We had, uh, by the way, Sabino graduated today. Really proud of him. And, uh, but I'm used to it. The players aren't used to it. You know, and so school's going to start here pretty soon. And they're, they're used to, I think, mid-September is when it started in the past. So it's more of a uh, change for them. This is all I've ever known, really. Is it more of a challenge, as a follow-up, is there more of a challenge for the freshmen just because they knew everything about it? Or? There's no challenge for the freshmen because they don't know any better. It's a challenge for the guys that have done it a certain way. I, but I haven't seen any resistance. And, you know, I, we're good to go. We're, the guys are, guys are doing what we ask. Average, average, and uh, we have not tried Najee because uh, he he might be a guy on defense as well. So, yeah, that's this next few days. Is there anybody stepped up there? Yeah, Philly's done a good job. I'm hoping Philly can do that. Uh, you know, Chris Fields has done decent. Uh, you know, Jake Bur Stoneburn in his own way. It's not him. It's not what you exactly what you want, but he's. So it's going to be probably a lot different looking than it looked at the other place. 
position light, though, but you wouldn't want to run him inside a lot and things like that. I mean, that's hard to find that guy. Yeah. What I'm finding out, it's really hard to find a guy that can do this and then also do this. As of right now, no, but we'll see how it goes. Two more questions, folks. we got Verlon for Ryder. No. No, Verlon's strictly uh, Michael, Thomas, Verlon. They're the body types. They're the long, you know, long strider. It takes him a second to get the, you know, same with Devin Smith. He's more of a that. You, you need a. Uh, above, uh, ahead of schedule. He's still in the boot, though. He's uh, he's a wonderful, wonderful young man that uh, I keep bragging about. is 3.0, 3.0, and I'm expecting 3.0 again. So that's for all of the for all of those of you of counting. That's three three point oh's. I hope. Um, but he's done everything we ask, and then some. And he's got a big smile on his face. He's ready to go as soon as they give him the approval. Uh, it's the same thing that everyone's dealing with, and it's uh, you try to once you get dinged. Uh, you're asking about injuries. Yes. Yeah, you you find out immediately where your depth issues are, and then you you try to get the twos ready, and then you like with a with a guy like uh, Jordan Hall, you know I have a calendar ready in my mind and on paper, and Nathan Williams. Those are the two guys off the top of my head that we have a plan on paper when we anticipate their return, and. We understand we have to bite the bullet until then, doing some other things that we maybe want to do when we got those two. I'm sure you're aware, Honey Badger, yes, just from Calum from LSU. Do you bring things like that, like that up to your team as examples? Of, <coughs> and have you done that? I mean, uh, of what can go wrong? Uh, and I'm not being probably a thousand times in, since January because it's just you sit there and you're like, you know, it's not just him. There's a whole slew of great players that aren't playing college football, which, I mean, and uh, I mean, I'm not saying about Tyrone, uh, uh, but to answer your question, I won't. I'd probably say a minimum of several times a day, uh, something is brought up about that, because it's such a fragile, uh, it's a fragile time for 18, 19, 20 year olds.